believes there are too many taxing districts in the East St. Louis area that seem to be designed mainly to provide jobs for politicians and their supporters. If you eliminate what he calls wasteful spending at local townships and the election board, he believes it will reduce the impact of corruption and increase the amount of money available for services like code enforcement and public works. What is it like to try to fight for the truth in East St. Louis? Um, it's the hardest fight that you're gonna have. The challenges seem overwhelming. How many of your students have been shot and killed? 63. I was thinking about was death. I was gonna get shot. At the Emerson Park School and Job Training Program, students like Rico Perkins. Can you imagine your, before your 14th birthday, you're like, Lord, am I gonna live to see 14? Am I gonna live to see 15? And Elena Burries try to survive the violence that has devastated the city. My whole world just came tumbling down right on top of me when they told me they got shot. I wanted, and I just wanted to go and make sure that it wasn't really him. I knew it was, and I couldn't do nothing about it. 63 since 1994. Wow. Yeah. Emerson Park's executive director, Vicki Forby, works with young adult students, many of them committed to turning their lives around and giving back to the community, but often finding little opportunity to work in the city and help rebuild it. I think people have done what they had to do to survive, and I think people will do that in any part of this world. And at times, it's a seemingly impossible task. What was it like to look over your shoulder all the time? Devastated, scared. Carl Willis wants to work in construction and eventually own his own company. But he's still in a gang and not ready to leave it because of the loyalty and respect he believes he gets from being a part of it. I'm gonna leave it one day. I ain't saying now, but one day I am. When the time come, I'll be ready. To leave the gang, Carl may have to take a severe beating or he could be killed. This was a beautiful community. This can be a beautiful community. Forby says the time has come to take drastic actions, like closing nightclubs and liquor stores at 10 p.m. and bringing in the National Guard to save a community that has been unable to save itself. I don't think there's anything wrong with having the National Guard come in. This country doesn't mind, it, mind invading another country to restore peace and, and deflect violence and restore government. So why are we afraid to do it here? There have been dramatic actions taken recently, including police raids on overnight clubs and Crown Food Marts. The state's attorney charged the Crowns with selling illegal synthetic drugs and other crimes. The nightclubs also face criminal charges. And a regional law enforcement commission has been created to provide oversight of the troubled East St. Louis area police departments and allow communities to use tax money, usually set aside for development, to help pay for law enforcement. The triple threats of poverty, violence, and corruption have cast a shadow over these cities for a long, long time. But I believe in the people of East St. Louis. They are fighting not just for their part of the American dream, they are fighting for their lives. And they deserve the best from us as public servants. Taking back East St. Louis will take much more than late night marches through the John DeShields public housing complex which prosecutors say has a higher murder rate than Juarez, Mexico, one of the most dangerous cities in Latin America. It really hurts. Evidence of systemic neglect is everywhere at the DeShields complex. The federal government failed to provide proper security, and the closed Lincoln High School is now a public disgrace, even a year after the state took control of the school district. They don't care about the community, they don't care about the people. Inside the school, more evidence of systemic failure, massive taxpayer waste, and mismanagement. Over the years, our investigations found that the elected school board often chose to spend millions of dollars on jobs for family, friends, and political cronies, instead of hiring more qualified teachers that live in their own community. Now it sits as the latest reminder that something once treasured is now trashed. Until you understand the tough work of building a community, you cannot really appreciate it. 
Um, and we want to appreciate our community. We want our community to appreciate us. The troubled East St. Louis School District, dominated for years by politics, remains one of the biggest obstacles to improving the community. As long as test scores and graduation rates are among the lowest in the state, many experts say the community will continue to struggle and it will be much slower to rebuild. When we come back, the story of little Ike and other children who want more and are willing to work for it. One of my favorite places on earth is an old brick building on the corner of 6th and Summit in East St. Louis. That's where you'll find the Christian Activity Center. I served on the center's board of directors for five years and was even the president, but that was a long time ago. And it's not why we're telling the center's story. You see, I've seen dramatic impact that the CAC has had on hundreds of children. And tonight, you will too. <laughs> Eight-year-old Ike Packer loves to laugh, especially at me. You know what I'm really afraid of? I'm afraid of spiders. <laughs> we met little Ike, as he's called, at the Christian Activity Center, one of the safest places in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in East St. Louis. It seemed like a good place to talk about our fears. Do you feel safe walking down the street? Nope. Really? What are you afraid of when you walk down the street? Scared of people chasing me. People be having guns. Little Ike's fear has deep roots. Two years ago, his 17-year-old brother Kenny was shot and killed as he walked to school. What do you want to be when you grow up? Police. Really? How come you want to be a policeman? Because you have saved people. Do you know anybody who needs saving? My brother, Kenny. Your brother, Kenny? How does your brother, Kenny, need saving? I think I'm alive again. How do you help a kid like Ike? You love him. <laughs> you support him. Chet Cantrell has been the executive director of the CAC for more than 20 years. In all African dialects, just about the word that translates from love uh, is, I see you with my eyes. That's what it means. And so all kids just want to be seen and they grow and flourish if somebody sees them and sees their potential and speaks that to them. The CAC has helped thousands of East St. Louis children develop their potential and create a safe environment with rules that hold them accountable for misbehaving. The neighborhood around the CAC is one of the poorest and most violent in the entire St. Louis area. The staff says children who are actively involved in the center's programs are far less likely to join gangs or do illegal drugs. And in many cases, their grades improve dramatically. Hey, what are you doing? I don't know, I'm helping you. I help you too. For 17-year-old Xavier Swope, coming to the CAC as a young boy and now as a part-time worker, has given him the opportunity to learn, become more focused, and give back to the community. My dream, probably, to see East St. Louis actually be known for our goodness instead of our bads. It changed my life, it really did. Michael Payne, a former CAC kid, helped launch the center's computer lab more than a decade ago. Now he's planning to pursue a PhD in computer science, focusing on facial recognition programs that could help businesses and law enforcement. After getting his doctorate, He'd like to open a network security business in East St. Louis, possibly training and hiring East St. Louis residents. People need mentors. Whenever you're trying to do something or get somewhere, you need somebody that's been there or at least knows how to get there to be able to help you. I believe I can fly. According to the center, children who attend at least three days a week have a 97% high school graduation rate, more than double the citywide average. And after graduation, three out of four CAC kids attend college or a trade school. That's almost six times the average for the city as a whole. Michael Payne 
is only one of many success stories. I know there's issues, but I try not to see the issues. I try to see how to fix them. You know, a lot of times people go and they see things, well, it's just bad and this is bad and this is wrong and that is wrong, you know, but you know, what are you actually trying to do to help? It's the kind of environment designed to support the hardworking families caring for kids like little Ike. Ike told me he feels safe here. Yeah. And that he doesn't always feel safe when he leaves here. And that's tragic. No kid should be afraid. Is that little Ike? <laughs> we told East St. Louis Police Chief Michael Flory about Little Ike. I heard you want to be a police officer. You do? Yes. Come on, let me show you some. So I'm gonna show you my car. And the chief couldn't wait to meet him. Push that button. <laughs> now hit the bottom button. <laughs> there you go. Hit it again. <laughs> there you go. And say test one two. Test one two. There you go. We all have dreams. You remind me when I was little too. You look just like me. It's too late for little Ike's big brother. So you can be whoever you want to be. Whether it's a police or an astronaut, or whatever you want to be, you can be it. But it's not too late. Give me a hug there, buddy. For little Ike. <laughs> Our job is to do what we can to let little Ike be somebody one day. He can be whoever he wants to be. <laughs> Good kid. You can learn more about the CAC and many other terrific organizations in East St. Louis by going to our website, KMOV.com. Some final thoughts in a moment. Corruption isn't new in East St. Louis. It began many decades ago with crooked white politicians and businessmen. But today, East St. Louis is less than half the size it used to be. And in a community this depressed, corruption takes a much heavier toll. There are no simple answers to the massive problems in East St. Louis, but it will take bold actions that hold people accountable, but still see the dignity and goodness in residents who have never given up. Something that's easy to do when you live in America's war zone. I'm Craig Cheatham. For all of us at News 4, thanks for watching.